You're watching Focus Saskatchewan. Welcome back. Until last week, transgender men and women in our province were required to prove they have had gender reassignment surgery in order to amend their birth certificates. Today, that's no longer the case. See, last week, the provincial government was presented with a consent order from the Court of Queen's Bench requiring the province to alter the criteria needed to change genders on official government documentation. Our Matt Myers brings us a story of how one woman helped to make history in Saskatchewan. It's been a long time coming. It's been several years working towards this, and I'm really excited. Laura Budd has been waiting a long time for this moment. So, Laura, yes. here is your new birth certificate as well as your health card. You've changed and amended correctly. Thank you, Alyssa. You're very welcome. Yes. Thank you. With her new birth certificate and health card, Laura is now legally a woman. So, Laura, it's in your hands. How are you feeling right now? Uh, a little overwhelmed, actually. Laura filed a formal human rights complaint against the province back in 2014, challenging the gender reassignment surgery requirement after her application to change her birth certificate was denied. In February of this year, a court ruled the current legislation violates human rights. A consent order was presented saying evidence of the procedure is no longer needed for adults. Imagine going through life where every time you pull out your identification, uh, it doesn't match your um, presentation and your true identity. It erases your existence. You feel less than human. And so I filed the complaint so that for myself and for my community, so that others that did not have the support that I have or did not have um, the, the patience and the emotional fortitude to go through this lengthy process to get to today. Justice Minister Gordon Wyatt detailed his plans to revise the law in a letter sent to Miki Mappin, an advocate for the transgender community. I've committed, of course, that we will formally amend the legislation uh, to remove the requirement, essentially now based on the order of the court. It's a major surgery, and there are people for health reasons who are forbidden from having it by their doctors, you know, heart conditions. The other thing, of course, is that not everybody wants to have these surgeries. And, in, in, you know, in the modern day, we've begun to realize that... Um, you know, our gender is not really our genitals. Our gender is who we are, you know, in our mind and spirit. eHealth Saskatchewan updated their website on March 1st to reflect the revised birth registration criteria. You are now able to apply for a new birth certificate, driver's license, and provincial health card all at the same time. The consent order is an interim method, but the government plans on holding more consultations on the Vital Statistics Act once the provincial election is over in April. We want to make sure that we do the proper consultation so that the requirements that will be in the Vital Statistics Act um, you know, are, are, are acceptable to those people that it affects. Mappin has experienced the repercussions firsthand and says without proper ID, transgender men and women still face discrimination in today's society. Transgender people will go for a job interview and everything's wonderful and you know the manager's like, oh yeah, this is the person we need for the job. And, uh, and so then they, you know, they put them on the short list or whatever, and then somebody starts looking at all the documentation, and they go, whoa, this is a woman, but the, the, the driver's license has an, has an M on it, you know? And, um, and so then, in a lot of cases, then they'll sort of say, ooh, that's too much trouble for us. Uh, let's hire that other person. Saskatchewan has progressed over the past few years with the inclusion of gender identity under the Human Rights Code back in 2014. But both Wyatt and advocates agree that more can be done. There's not enough um, beds, uh, spaces in, in shelters, in homeless shelters, in you know, addiction shelters and that kind of thing in this province. Now, if you're transgender, it's even worse because many times you won't be accepted by the men's or the women's facility. The big thing is, of course, society needs to change and to start accepting people for who they are. It's one thing to change legislation. It's another thing to change attitudes. And I, and I think that, that there needs to be some ongoing education in terms of, of issues that affect the trans community and other communities that are affected by human rights legislation. So, thank you so much. This is Laura was the first person in Saskatchewan to receive her new certificate under the rewritten guidelines. While it has been a struggle, it's just a small part of Laura's journey coming to terms with her new identity and life with her family over the past two decades. This is me and it's always been me. And with one major obstacle out of the way, the future continues to be bright as she celebrates a new beginning. It's a relief 
to finally now be seen as a human being in society. I am just the same as everybody else again, and it feels good. It really is my birthday all over again. My life starts here.